Welcome to an intimate forum on dating and young adults. We've got an age range here between 23 and 40, and we're going to be talking about some very sensitive issues. Issues that deal with those that are single and not married in the 21st century, especially in Canada and also in North America. I've got some great people that are here. They've been, they've been waiting to, uh, to chat, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time even in our intro, but I'm, I'm asking now, um, just, just from the top of your head, is it difficult or is it easy these days to get a date in the 21st century? And we're talking from a Christian perspective and we're also talking here from a non-Christian perspective. So I'm just throwing that out to you. Um, this is Justin right here. He's got a lot to this say. Is, this is Justin. Um, I don't think it's hard to get a date in uh, today's society. I think you just have to put yourself out there and be very aggressive. Mm -hmm. You gotta find someone that suits you, depends on what you're trying to look for. Depends on what you're trying to look for. Yeah. Anybody agree with that? I agree. Yeah, I agree. I also, I mean, it's not about, you know, it's not hard to find a date, but it's hard to find the right person that you can just click and have fun with. So. And is, is really fun the biggest, the most drawing attraction to, you're talking about connecting with another adult? Well, enjoying, enjoying their time and their presence and what their life is about, that type of fun. Okay, you guys look like you're, you're really healthy young adults. Now, let me ask you a question. With the, uh, the society that we're living in, we're going we're gonna to talk about some deeper issues besides just dating because I think it gets a little bit more complicated than that because when you're dating someone or when you're looking for a prospective person, do you have to have a police check on them? And what about this whole thing about AIDS and everything else? Does that bother you that people... These days, you don't know if they're carrying an STD or there's there's possibilities. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it, it does bother you because just like with like how easy it is, like or how easy people give up, give themselves away, like um, and there's the availability of so many more people with online, like you can meet people a lot easier because you have like a range of people you could date like all of the GTA really because online you have access to them you meet up with them in person you know like they're just a click away so like you don't know anything about that person um, for me like sometimes I kind of like Google people just to, <laughs> to see you know like is this person like you know active online like is there a presence do they have a lot of mutual friends with me because like, maybe that means that they're a person who gets around or well, a good point to jump off of because myself as a pastor, I talk to a lot of young people and I talk to a lot of young adults and men and women that are single. Can a Christian uh, actually date? And is it, is it something that the Bible is, is uh, uh, really open to? Is, is it something that, that is acceptable? And uh, you had some thoughts on that. Yeah, well, it's something that I've been struggling with because it's something that... Um, you don't see the word dating in the Bible, so you don't know. Like all you know is people were betrothed or people just saw somebody and like, I like that person, now you're my wife, you know, I'm gonna go speak to your family. So like not being in that context of, you know, staying with your parents and then them marrying you off or having people come to your house and being like, she's desirable to me. I was like, how am I gonna find a husband? You know, how am I gonna find my life partner? So I struggled with this whole dating thing because there's nobody to actually tell me like you can't date or you can date and dating for me is something like you go out and get to know somebody you could go for coffee or sometimes you're just hanging out and it becomes a date it's not necessarily intended to be a date it's a schoolmate a co-worker so I didn't actually know the answer to that question that's something that you know I'm happy to like explore with other people to learn more because for me in my singleness, dating was a time of kind of trying to get to know myself and get, get to find that partner. You know, it's beautiful that you're talking about this because I think it's the nomenclature that we're, we're speaking of. And uh, from a standpoint of the only reason that there is a secular and a sacred is the sacred or the secular is just the absence of the sacred. So we actually introduce into that, that narrative the, the, 
the actual vocabulary that the scripture uses. Uh, courtship is what, what the Bible speaks about. And it actually, it, it, it works on the level of looking at a spiritual oneness before we actually look at uh, a soul oneness and look at a body oneness. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So whoever we become joined to, actually, we actually have a relationship that goes deeper than what meets the eye. Now, I, I don't want to jump too far into that because I want to I come around to Mo as well because when we talk about that nomenclature, when we talk about the language that we're using today, I think that's where it becomes very confusing because most people are saying, well, what technology am I using? Am I uh, using PC or am I a Mac person? You know, mm. am, I, am I talking uh, the narrative of, of what's happening in the, uh, uh, what we would say, popular culture? Or am I using the narrative of, of what scripture says is what is acceptable to me? And I think that's where our confusion comes in. And, and I want to bring a, a young man in, uh, finishing his MBA and, and, and Mo, uh, uh, Christians and non-Christians dating. Uh, you have some thoughts on that as well. Well, over the past 15 years, um, there's been a lot of social stigma over the, over the concept of people dating um, out, of, out of their own faith. Yeah. So um, ever since the 1990s, um, there used to be a smaller proportion of people dating outside of their faith, um, mm -hmm. 11%. Nowadays, over 30% of the Canadian population are dating out of their faith. And so it's, it's something that's becoming more accepted by our society where you, uh, you gain understanding of other cultures, other faiths, and it's, um, it's becoming more accepted by our society. Yeah, and when you're talking about uh, interfaith and ecumenical as far as those that have the same belief and those that are completely polarized in their belief as well, when you're talking about someone who is probably a, a monotheist where that would be Judaism, Islam, and also Christianity versus pantheistic that believe in a multiple amount of gods. Now we have this soul salsa that's taking place in our society, especially in, in the GTA where we have within the reach uh, maybe 200 and, and something different mother tongues within seven, seven kilometers of where we are. So you're absolutely right. I think with the statistics that they're talking about, Mo, is they're, they're also looking at uh, a deteriorating and an eroding uh, uh, fabric of family and culture as well in marriage. Uh, because I think right now they said less than 47% of the people who get married the first time will actually stay married uh, within 10 years. And uh, even in the church, uh, one in four marriages have uh, found themselves deteriorating because a lot of the people that are coming and getting into marriages never saw a family that had a mother and a father that stayed together. So they are coming out of blended families or they're coming out of relationships where there was no father in the home and or the, the mother was a single and sole parental voice, which is, a, which is a complete change. So let me ask you the question. When you're talking about uh, the dating of non-Christian and Christian, because we have some in here, we have a, we have a good balance of those that are, are uh, who, who are identified as, as agnostic. I don't think that uh, we have an atheist in the group, but we do. Oh, you're the atheist? Yes. Oh, praise God. See, I was wondering, I, I know we, we had it, we were talking about that. So, an, an anti-theist, uh, and also dating uh, a person that believes in God, um, that's PC and Mac. Now, tell us a little bit about that. Well, my, my girlfriend is Catholic, and yes. she, uh, she's involved in the church, and, um, and I'm not involved in the church. So, what it all boils down to is, we don't look at the relationship from, is God with the relationship is are we compatible with each other and that's what we value the most that's that's what adds the most value to our relationship is that we care with for one another and um, one of the biggest obstacles with God and and religion in the relationship is further down the road when we get married um, do I have to convert to being Catholic to be married to someone who's Catholic in a Catholic church um, how are our kids going to be raised up um, when they're going through the school system Catholic public so these are challenges, but um, our love for each other is what allows us to overcome these challenges. How do you feel about those things, those challenges right now? Because it sounds like you're you're extrapolating. You're actually thinking about this is going to take place. What, what what have your 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 conclusions been when you think about what school they're going to go to, and even the, and the, the the whole thought in the topic of conversion? My philosophy is that every day is a winding road. So you take everything by by whatever comes at you, and so. Um, uh, maybe 10 years down the road, um, the way that I think, my, the way that I think is dynamic. 
I don't try to stay in the same place. So I may be looking at things in this perspective and I may be more accepting in this uh, in five, 10 years down the road. So um, I, I have faith in our relationship and I have faith in uh, what's to come in the future in, in respect to our relationship. So I think I'll be more um, welcoming to anything that comes our way. Beautiful. Well, it sounds like you're going to stay married a long time because right now you're a politician. You're like, I'll, I'll go with you. <laughs> right. This guy and him get his movie and all the men. I mean, you guys are hearing that as well. You know, one of the things that I do see with that, and I, and I think that's really good, and I'd like to pivot with that as well because I'd like to give you guys an opportunity to respond to that as well because uh, Mo sounds like he has a strong belief. He's not as much anti-theist as much as he's probably agnostic at this point because I, I think what he's saying is I'm constantly in motion. But I'd also like to bring someone else in on that because from a Christian perspective, and I, I'm, I'm asking you now, Sydney, because you've been able to, as a, a, an athlete and as a model and, and doing a lot of things, recognize uh, a heart for God. And you've been waiting for God's perfect for your life. And when you hear this, what does that, what does that remind you of? What does that say to you? Oh, man. Um. Yeah, um, I'm going into my seventh year now of, of uh, waiting for the one. The Lord told me, wait, um, I've got one chosen for you. And how do I say that without sounding so lame, like I'm waiting, you know, not actively waiting. Uh, I freely confess that I've done everything in the wrong way before realizing that there's only one way to waiting. And um, I never believed in love until Jesus first loved me. Um, so, so you're saying even dating and some of the things that you thought yeah. as far as kind of hanging out at the club, looking for the hookup, and then just kind of like yeah. Friday night is yeah, here, exactly. let's go. You know, um, it's so black or white, you know, uh, when you're living in the flesh and then you start to live in the spirit, everything goes off, the light goes off, and you see all the things that you were running after, even in relationships, um, running after someone's looks or running after someone's career, running after the money they make, um, it's not good. Um, so yeah, just... Um, just waiting is, is worth the wait. So what you're looking at is you're saying that there are some, some challenges as far as to, to dating and being out there. Yeah. I, I want to do this because I, I saw Daniel, I got your attention on that. When you were listening to Mo, mm -hmm. you, you, you appeared to be uh, a, a little bit thoughtful about that because also uh, you're a young man that you've been able to, to see from the standpoint of what's going on in the city uh, vibe and then also uh, to to make some adjustments in your life. Why don't you jump in on this? Well, I was thinking about <clears throat> the whole dating, even with if you're non-Christian, with a Christian. I think one of the things I look back at now, because I, because I read the Bible, is unequally yoked. And I look at it, and I'm like, wait a second. Yes, I mean, it's great that if you can work it out, but sooner or later, the spiritual things are going to have to outweigh. One, one of them is going to have to weigh the other one. And it's going to get to a point, so they, you know, if one doesn't believe, the other person is going to weigh the other person down. Right? Because like, either you put God first, or, or he's not there at all. Right? So it's where you believe. And I think if you have a strong faith in God and the other person doesn't, it's going to be a, it's going to be a battle. You're going to fight one another sooner or later, right? Especially as you move on. Or one, of the, one has to convert, right? Either the Christian's going to convert over to not believing in the faith or they're not that strong anyways and they don't really go into it deeply. Or the other person's going to convert, right? So it's not, I don't know, it's tough. It's a tough place to be. I agree with Daniel um, because uh, I've mainly dated non-Christians because I always thought well my faith is so strong no one can move me they can't change me but right after getting baptized um, for a second time within two weeks of being baptized I broke out out of a relationship because my partner didn't see things the same way as I did like he didn't believe in marriage and he said you know what I really don't believe in marriage and I feel like if we stay together Either I'm going to end up marrying you and resenting you, or I'm not going to marry you and you're going to resent me. Because I just don't believe in that and I respect you too much and I think you deserve to be with a Christian. And so um, that's one relationship. And even the last relationship I had where I was a Christian and my partner was, was Christian, but now they're searching or you know maybe they don't believe in a God. Um, we couldn't stay together because like our core values at the end of the day don't match. We would argue about, you know, are we going to raise our children as Christian? Um, how do we feel about marriage? And at the end of the day, you know, as much as I pray and I pray, I don't see it, I didn't see it as ending up 
with me being happy in a relationship. And I feel like you need to have the same values and beliefs in order for it to work out in the long term. Well, I think that's really what Mo was saying. I think, Justin, you feel like jumping in and winning in on this. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think as long as you guys have respect for each other and respect for each other's faith and the love is there, I think it can work out. Because, like, in my own personal experience, like, I grew up Anglican. So, and my mom is heavily in the church. So when I was growing up, it was Bible school, Sunday school, everything. I was very involved until the point when I reached about, like, 16, 17. And then I decided that, like, you know what, let me see what else is out there. So I wouldn't necessarily say like I left my faith, but I wanted to define myself in other aspects of life. So I haven't returned back yet. I'm not really like an avid church goer, avid church follower, but I still have that background inside of me. But I remember like dating, I was dating this one girl. We dated for about a year. And I remember when I first met her, she wasn't really into church either. We were both dating, it was working perfectly. And then she had a friend that started bringing her to her church, back and forth, back and forth. and she got saved and then she began to go to church and then eventually she basically told me that we had to break up because I didn't believe the same thing she believed right but I was trying to explain to her that like even though I don't even though I'm not on that same page with you right now it's like I still have respect for the religion understanding so it's like at the end of the day we can still have those conversations but she didn't see it that way it was kind of just like you know if you're not on that same page mm -hmm. it's not going to work but then at the same time along with that I recently went to um a wedding about two months back in the Dominican Republic, one of my friend's wedding. And these two people were both getting married. One was Hindu, one was Muslim, and they were both getting married. And I know in the Muslim culture, like, the religion also has like a very strong culture with it as well. And for his side of the family, only his mother came, because nobody else accepted it, because the culture is that strong. But on her side, I was on her side as well, we all came to celebrate. And they've been together for about six, seven years. And religion has always been the reason why they couldn't be together, but they've overcame it. They're working together. Now they have a child. I'm not sure which faith they're raising the child in, but I think as long as you have respect for the faith and understanding for each other, it's going to work out. You know, I think this is a, this is a great pivot because um, um, I, I like where you guys are going because I, I'd like to actually go a little bit deeper. Can we go a little bit deeper? I think the, the reality, uh, when you say said she started going to church and she got saved, now, I think this is where, where we get an opportunity to talk about, uh, let's talk about sex. 